Today I'm with Chris Days. Chris Days is a, a local mortgage broker. He's been um, operating in the area for a long time, a portfolio landlord in the past himself as well. And he's been operating in the lockdown that we're all in at the moment. I thought it'd be a great opportunity to touch base with Chris and see how he's operating, what recommendation he has for us, and what you should be doing now as a landlord from the perspective of a mortgage broker. Uh, Chris, nice to have you on. Uh, how you been uh, finding the lockdown and working? Yeah, um, obviously to begin with, all the lenders sort of changed the criteria quite a bit. Yeah. But everything started getting better sort of day by day. Yeah. Every week, the criteria is getting better. Loans of values are getting better. Um, and to be honest with you, I've still been submitting lots of mortgages. Great. And I'm assuming you were working from home before the lockdown as well? Was it like an appointment by appointment basis or were you based yeah, so, this? Yeah, there's lots of, I work with, within different estate agencies, but mainly, oh, yes, yeah, from home. So, yeah. so not I'm much change there. So you've adapted to being around the kids and all of that. I don't know if I've adapted yet, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting going with it. No, good. I can see you've got your whiteboard behind, so I'm sure you've been working hard. Um, so, yeah, obviously it's a tough time, and it's good to hear that you've been trading as normal and trying to be proactive and positive in these times. Um, property is a, such an important factor of our economy, and it's so important that landlords be now, I think, using this opportunity to revisit their investment strategies and either look at reviewing their current mortgages, looking at what they're going to do in the future. And that's where I feel like mortgage brokers play such an important role because really no one knows, you know, what options they've got, what rates you should be paying, what opportunities they have other than people like yourself. So I just wanted to ask you a few questions and hopefully these questions could be really informative for our landlords. Right now, we know interest rates have uh, dropped, but has that led to good rates being available on mortgages for purchases, for buy to let investments? Yeah, it's a good question. Like, obviously, because the Bank of England have reduced the rate a couple of times, everyone mm. automatically thinks that the lenders are going to reduce their rates, which, to begin with, they didn't. But the rates yeah. have started being reduced a little bit. But obviously, they haven't been reduced as much as the Bank of England rate. But rates are, at an all-time, they're really, really low at the minute anyway. So for landlords, it's a great time to be remortgaging and looking at reviewing the mortgages because there is some fantastic, really low rates about. Okay. And what's the lowest rate you've been able to secure for one of your clients over the last few weeks, Chris? Um, I think we did. Um, the two-year fixed rate about 1.4%. Wow. <laughs> That's oh, phenomenal, yeah. isn't it? That's next really to nothing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So rates are really, really low. Yeah, so 100% we should be looking at putting in applications now. Um, so just to follow up on from that, is this a practical time to look at remortgaging with everything that's going on? Yeah, I mean, obviously, just based on the rates alone, it's what the best one of the best times to review because rates yeah. are at an all-time low. So yeah, take advantage of the low rates. Yeah, it's a perfect time to review. In obviously, the criteria with regards to mortgages has has changed quite a bit, but again, every week it's getting better. Things like valuations, yeah, they're still being done. The mortgages are still being done. People are still buying houses. People are still completing on houses, especially first-time buyers where they're maybe in lockdown, but they're going, they're buying a house and they're coming out of lockdown and they're not really speaking to anyone else. It's yeah. fine still to sort of complete a house. So this is a very much different to what we're hearing in the media. So what we're hearing is even from you know. Lenders, mortgage lenders say, look, you can't get a mortgage at the moment. We're not submit, taking on any new applications, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, and whereas what you're saying is you can still buy a property, buy a mortgage, still agree a new mortgage, submit new application. Yeah. You can remortgage. So where's this discrepancy? How come, you know, we're miles apart from what we're hearing and what the reality is? I think like most things, the media like to scaremonger and... Yeah. paint a picture that things are a lot worse than they are but in reality I'm still submitting lots of mortgages every week people are still buying houses they might people might not be completing if they can't get removal people but like I say first time buyers where they're going from a lockdown position where they're not seeing anybody else people are still buying houses brilliant fantastic so I've had a lot of landlords speak to myself and look literally reviewing 
what their strategy is, uh, thinking about this current period, trying to work out is this an opportunity or should they take a step back from investment and see how the market goes. But and with all of these questions, there's one underlying thing they need to know, which is, can I still get a buy to let mortgage? And what is the criteria? So I think you've touched base on that. You're saying, yeah. you know, there is mortgages available. But if there's desktop valuations taking place, does that mean the banks are going to obviously hedge their risk a little bit and maybe not lend to the maximum they would have before? Or how's it working? Like we touched on before, yeah. lenders of my panel of lenders i have a, a panel of a, over 90 lenders right. um yeah. one of the main buy select ones being someone like birmingham Midshires, who this week have increased their loan to value back from 60 percent what they reduced it to back yeah. up to 75 percent loan to value so right. they've got an appetite for lending and yeah. they, they are doing valuations at some desktop valuations at 75 percent loan to value yeah so people can buy a buy select still putting 25 percent deposit down desktop valuation just a quick one here for them that uh, for those of them for those of the people who don't know what a desktop valuation is can you just give us a, a quick summary of what a desktop valuation is please certainly so rather than the value actually physically go around the property yeah he will do his comparables and all his work based from a computer from his desktop okay and he will value the property from his desk so doing comparables looking at properties that are in the area um, so rather than physically going around the property, which obviously we can't do at the moment because of coronavirus, yeah, and um, they will do it remotely from the desk. That's a great idea. What do you think, Chris? Is the thing going forward maybe or um, certain properties it's not good for? So, for example, if someone's bought a house, done a lot of work on the property, and someone needs to physically look at the work that's been done, mm. then obviously they might be penalised because if they look at comparables, they won't be able to see the work that's been done on the property. Yeah. Whereas if it's just a normal valuation where nothing really has changed, it should be all right. Um, a lot of the time you might see the values being slightly less than what it would be on a physical valuation um, because the value is going to err on the side of caution. They would but, do without going inside, I suppose. Yeah, that makes complete sense. Yeah. It would, but at lower loan to values, um, mortgage lending is, is still fine. So... And this is an apt time for some people that still need to sell their properties. And, you know, if you're going to get a lower valuation, it should be offset by the lower prices. Potentially, you can agree in this, you know, period that we're in at the moment, you know, because the demand is lower, a hell of a lot lower than, you know, what it was just a month ago. So um, I feel like it's some great opportunities to be agreed and uh, great sales, uh, great prices, and obviously, if you are getting a slightly lower valuation, it should ultimately lead to a really good investment anyway. Well, thank you for that, Chris. Um, just like one last question for my landlords out there. Do you think this is a good time to invest in property? Well, you're probably the best person to answer based on the fact, that obviously, with the rentals in Blackpool. But for me, Blackpool's always got a really, really strong rental market. Really? And with the house prices being what they are for investors, I don't think you're going to get a better investment with return like you can in Blackpool. And if you're looking at, say, Terry Towers is eighty to ninety thousand pound, you can't physically buy the land and build the house for that sort of money. Yeah. Anyway, so I don't think house prices, places like London, they might go down a bit. But where we are, I can't, I can't see them going down much. They might level off for a bit. Yeah. But I think it's still going to be a strong rental market. It always is. No, 100%. No, thank you for that, Chris. And what's the biggest tip you'd give to landlords at the moment, Chris? Um, if you're seriously thinking about buying, I would get the application in. Obviously, rates are really, really low. Yeah. Once the market picks up again, there's going to be a massive influx of valuations. So there's going to be a backlog. Um, so anybody who's serious, get an application in, and then obviously you're going to be in the queue. If a desktop valuation isn't done and a physical one's needed, you're going to be seen too quicker. But take advantage of the low interest rates. Brilliant. And Chris, if I've got anyone that wants to book an appointment with yourself or benefit from your advice, what's the best thing for them to do? Um, if you can either email me, um, yeah. we'll put the email and the phone number in the, in the comments below. Um, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, contact me by mobile or email is fine. I'm more than happy to help with anybody. Fantastic.
No, thank you, Chris. You're doing a phenomenal job. Uh, carry on helping people buy houses and uh, buy investment properties. And uh, yeah, I'll pass on your details to our landlords. And we look forward to having a touch base uh, soon as well. Thank All you right. very much.